I think that that in in realizing that I am a precious as precious as my work, I'm able to bring more care to my work. I I take better care of myself and take care of better care of myself as an artist who is going to be um, professional and out in the world. I consider the whole thing more as one. The art and the person have grown together. This is another program in our segment on personal change. Tara Parr is a professional artist who also teaches. She entered psychotherapy because she wanted to understand her lack of success as an artist. She felt the need to make some significant personal changes if she was to become the artist she wanted to be. I'm with Dr. Marlene Winnell, a psychologist who worked with Tara as a change facilitator. Marlene, tell me about Tara. Bill Tara was a joy to work with. She's a beautiful person and she does wonderful art. The change that she accomplished in the course of therapy I think is very interesting. As we think about change, it's important to realize that the basis of it is a full self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. And then from there people can see what they would like to change and develop. Mm -hmm. And for Tara, that involved looking over her past experience, her childhood, and her current situation, and then accepting herself as an artist and letting that sink down and become very real. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that was getting back in touch with herself as a child, mm -hmm. being more playful, and just letting herself flourish and become who she really wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it didn't really seem like a lot of change. Mm -hmm. But it was a very significant change of perspective, of mm -hmm. attitude, mm -hmm. and that's personal change that's very important. Yeah. And the process she used? The process was basically one of getting support in a group therapy where there were other people who also shared the same human concerns with having backgrounds that weren't perfect and current uh, traits and faults mm -hmm. and excited about personal hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. And so from there, Tara was able to gain the courage and the commonality with other people to go ahead and be who she is. I think in the last few years I've really decided that my work as a visual artist is the most important thing in my life. And there have been a lot of things that have really helped me to make that decision. I uh, have increasingly found the art to be such a personal expression of who I am that it makes it easier to want to spend all my time on that. The art object becomes a really precious thing. I got into therapy uh, wanting to figure out why I was having some trouble focusing on the things that were important to me, especially my art. And I think I felt pretty insecure about, about myself as an artist. I felt a little awkward and, and like my work was not very acceptable to other people and that it didn't fit in. And that awkwardness extended itself into all parts of my life. So, I, I didn't feel at ease, and I needed to find out why. I, I found it very helpful to go back and look at, at some of the issues and people that were important to me as a child, my parents, in particular, my father, mm -hmm. 
and I've done a lot of work in how I feel about those people. And instead of, uh, instead of feeling angrier at those people for the things that they may have done to uh, make my life difficult, I feel more comfortable with them. I think school was always very difficult and I never felt comfortable and like I was able to do my work and be with the other children on, on an equal footing. I'm not, I'm still not sure what all the reasons for that were, but I think that I have become a lot more comfortable being with people and recognizing that I did have problems when I was a child. I had a lot of problems learning things and uh, getting along with other children. So I felt pretty lonely and alienated as a child. So it's been, it's been really helpful to, uh, I, I think a lot of times that art is a very lonely kind of profession to be into and, and I don't feel lonely about it anymore. So it's, it's been helpful to go back and look at how I felt as a child and deal with that. Um, the awkwardness that I felt as a child came out in my work a lot of times. And I guess it still does, but I don't relate to it anymore as being a private thing or a thing that other people cannot relate to. I don't feel like I am so separate from other people. I feel like a lot of times the experiences that I've had and trying to communicate with other people about what that awkwardness might have been is, is really my contribution to humanity. That's what I can talk about the best. I think uh, a lot of times the way that we learn to deal with people when we're young, and particularly people that are really important to us can carry over. And so I think there were things about my father and the way I dealt with him that uh, I found arising in my relationships with other people that, and things that I didn't like. I didn't like the way I was relating to some of these other people that seemed to be important in my life. Uh, people like my boss at work uh, and I didn't really quite know how to, to deal with the behavior that I was, um, that I was getting or that I was having to, to deal with. And so in thinking about how that related to my childhood and how, how I talked to my father and how I was used to having him talk to me, I was able to to figure out that there were some things I didn't like and then I confronted that with my boss and that it was a very good healthy thing for me and for him I think probably. In the process of being in therapy I realized that just as I have to give special attention to a piece that I'm working on, I have to give special attention to myself. I have to treat myself as well as I would treat my work. And as importantly, it has to become something that's really precious and something that you really work on. And that's the only way you're going to have anything to really share. I always knew that therapy could be helpful to people, but I always thought that it would be very time consuming and um, expensive and I wasn't sure that I couldn't 
deal with the things myself. I think that was the main thing, was that I can deal with these things on my own. I've gone through some things in the last few years that made me stop and say that, realize that I, I really needed to deal with some issues that uh, have for a long time bothered me, but that I thought I could just move on from in my life. And, and some of those issues have been just accepting who I am. I think that for a long time, I wanted to change who I was in some respect and become something that uh, was different or better than what I am. And through working with other people in a therapy group, I realized that I like who I am and it's all right to be who I am and not worry so much about the parts of me that uh, may seem awkward or um, or different from the other members of my society. I, I think it, when you're working on a piece, a lot of times it can be very frustrating and hard. And and you get frust you don't you don't understand where it's going and you don't really like it and you're not so sure that it was worthwhile in the first place and you just have your doubts about about what its importance might be and yet you you're very um you have an investment in it and so you don't want to give it up you have to keep trying and it's a lot of times when the piece is, is at its worst point that you just can't walk away from it. You have to keep working on it and going back and trying to resolve something. And I think that's, that's true as a, a person growing and learning and experiencing in the world, that the things that give you the most trouble a lot of times become the things you have to focus on in order to get past them and feel comfortable with them and, and accept them as, as valid. You have to really search for what it is that will make a piece special and make it something more than it, uh, something more than you had originally thought it would be. I think that uh, a lot of the visualizations we did in group were like taking little trips, um, going places where you would imagine what, uh, what some of the obstacles were and also what some of the goals were in your life. And uh, they would take some very physical, um, some very real physical forms, uh, what your goals would be and what what your fears might be, monsters would arise, and uh, and that just really helped to uh, then you could take that monster with you when you had to go and do something really hard and think about how you dealt with it in a visualization, how you overcame that monster and how you put it in its place and made it a less important obstacle to you in your life. There was a, a visualization that we did where we were going on a journey and we were carrying with us all the things that 
were difficult obstacles and issues in our lives. And uh, for myself, I had a, had a pack that was filled with rocks. And when I stopped, uh, I was able to stop at a point and take those rocks out of my pack. And those rocks became uh, ex the expectations that I had of myself based on what I thought other people might expect of me. And taking those rocks out of the pack was a big relief. And we continued on, for, on our um, journey once we had, I continued on my journey once I had taken those rocks out of the pack this expectations I had gotten rid of and we went to a place where there was oh a lake or a stream and I went swimming and it was very refreshing and I was able to further um, divorce myself from what those expectations might be In coming out of the, the water, I found in my pack uh, new clothes that um, were really comfortable and attractive, a yellow blouse and um, some really comfortable pants and, uh, and a gun that was, um, it was just kind of a magical gun, it wasn't uh, wasn't your your typical shoot 'em up gun. It was a magical gun that gave me power and courage to do and be what I wanted. On from there, after finding all these things in the pack and putting on the new clothes, continued on up to uh, a place where we could look, uh, I could look out over um, a beautiful vista and see the ocean and, and the beach and um, everything was just really, um, the air was really clear and the view was very beautiful and open and, and uh, inviting. Because we were all doing it together and sharing our experience, it, it became a, a real group effort to help each other and to realize some things about each other. And, and it, was, it could be uh, extremely helpful to hear someone else's feelings mm -hmm. about who you, you are and what your problems are. Other people's perceptions about you can be very clarifying as to what's going, really going on with you. I think mo from, for the most part, it's really helpful to work with someone, especially when you're working on some very personal issues. You need to work with someone to figure out uh, where you're going and a, a lot of times it's really helpful if that person isn't very close to you. So it's, it seems to be important to find someone who doesn't necessarily know everything about you and that you're not going to live with for the rest of your life. Someone who, who uh, can be a little more objective and, and someone who's there just for you to talk to and and um, it just focuses you more on what it is you need to deal with. And it puts you at ease a little bit more, too. It would seem that, it would seem the opposite, but, but uh, once you've done it for a while, it's, you're more comfortable, I think. In therapy, I did a tape with my therapist that I was able to play at home 
for the purpose of helping me uh, get started with my work and feel comfortable um, just being able to go into my studio and work. And in that tape, I started out in a room that was uh, up high. I was in like a tree house. I think that when I was in the room, it was very safe and comfortable and familiar. And yet I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel the, uh, the energy or the um, conviction that I, I was, um, was able to just go straight to my work and do that. I, I felt a little bit uh, like I was closed up in the room. So in, in being able to, to gather some strength and some security from being in that room, then I was able to go out and into the park and experience that in a really positive way. And I passed through that park um, where there were other people, but I spent time pretty much by myself, looking very carefully at, at different things in nature and just enjoying how good it felt, how good the air felt, and, and uh, what a good day it was. into a marketplace where I found to my surprise again that I was I was pretty comfortable and even feeling a little braver more courageous about uh, what it was I wanted to do and and so I was able to to go from the marketplace right to my studio and work and ultimately uh, doing work that I could communicate with people. Visual Arts Center and it's a shell-like house image that spirals out and ends in a piece that uh, kind of reaches out almost in a human for the human gesture. It's it's exciting to have it in front of people where I'll be getting a lot of reactions and just having it finished and in a place where it can affect a lot of people makes me look at it more seriously and, and just feel more fulfilled with the idea, more comfortable. And I, I'm learning a lot from, I, I always learn a lot from the, the work I do about myself and and my connection to other people and and uh, a reaching in kind of a reaching in and understanding oneself
I love the colors that they used. It, it was a lot like being a child and, and going back and, and really exploring color in a new childlike way. I enjoy doing these a lot. And I started to use a lot more color in all my work. There's such a feeling of movement in each one of these. Like each of the objects in them has a kind of energy, almost as if it's trying to get out. They glow. That's interesting. The way the group members were saying you were glowing. Hold on. Yes. Oh yeah. Ready? Woo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fun. I think there are a lot of a lot of things that are kind of right there under our noses, understanding us about ourselves and and what we want and how and what's okay. Uh, we, for myself, I was never really confident that if I went out there and tried things that it would really go very well. And so I would just try a little bit at a time and I didn't I didn't really want to put myself on the line too much. And I think that being in therapy and seeing so many other people um, doing the same thing and and being just as frightened as I was, uh, it made me realize that maybe um, there are some advantages to just going ahead and doing what it is that you really want and not feeling so uh, timid about the rate at which you do those things that you really want and you really care about and that life is short anyway and it's time to it's it's always time to do the best you can do the most you can to uh, make yourself what you want to be and make yourself happy.